Yo, what is good, nerds? This is your boy Six Mike the Jonathan coming back at it again with another video. Today we'll be going over part three of what if Naruto had the curse mark, or what if Naruto had Orochimaru's mark. And yet again, we will be diving into this incredible tale. So if you saw the last video, we once again did not hit our comment or like goals, but that is fine. It just means these videos are going to come out a little slower. And in fact, if you're interested in more content on this channel, next week we are starting a new project in the form of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Rewrite. So if you like Yu-Gi-Oh! or are interested in a Yu-Gi-Oh! style rewrite, make sure to hit that bell notification and subscribe button. Thank you to our boy Anthony for this wonderful intro. And without further ado, let's get it started. After the conclusion of the preliminary stage of the Chunin exams, Kakashi took Naruto aside for isolated training. Knowing the severity of the situation, Naruto had to learn control, not only over the dangerous new power that now threatens to overwhelm him, but also over his own chakra and emotions. The training began with intense focus on suppressing techniques teaching Naruto how to restrain the curse mark's influence. Kakashi drilled him relentlessly, emphasizing that power without control could destroy him, just as it had many before. Each day, Naruto practiced suppressing the mark's dark influence, while engaging in intense physical exercises along with chakra control exercises. He could feel the curse mark tugging at his chakra, a constant temptation to unleash its dangerous power. But with Kakashi's steady guidance, Naruto slowly learned to fight back drawing on his inner strength rather than relying on raw, uncontrollable force. As a week passed, Naruto honed his ability to suppress the mark. The strain was immense, but Kakashi watched carefully, testing Naruto's limits and ensuring he didn't go too far. Kakashi occasionally sought the help of an old Anbu comrade, a masked shinobi that possessed the ability to manipulate wood release. The Mash Shinobi taught Naruto how to tap into his Ninetail Chakra without the mark, pushing him to use the Ninetail's power sparingly. This method, though difficult, began to give Naruto an edge. And finally, when Kakashi saw that Naruto had gained enough control, he decided to teach him a new ninjutsu, the Chidori. It was a powerful and deadly jutsu, but Kakashi made sure to drill into Naruto's head the importance of caution. The technique was risky. Its tunnel vision effect could leave the user vulnerable. Naruto, eager to learn but mindful of the dangers, practiced the Chidori, though he refrained from using it recklessly. Every strike had to be precise, every action deliberate, and Kakashi's constant reminders of the limitations of Jutsu resonated with Naruto as he prepared for the challenges ahead. And before they knew it, the Chunin exam was about to start. Somewhere completely differently, near the start of the month, Sasuke continues his training. He finds himself at a secluded hot spring, working relentlessly to not let Naruto leave him behind. Naruto, as you know, was undergoing intense training under Kakashi. And while Sasuke practiced alone, a mysterious man with long, spiky white hair and a laid-back demeanor approaches him. This stranger, observing Sasuke's fierce determination, asked why he had pushed himself so hard. Sasuke, frustrated and single-minded, replies that he can't let Naruto leave him behind. The stranger listens quietly, offering no real response at first. But his presence stirs something within Sasuke. There's something peculiar about this man, a feeling that he holds vast knowledge and power. Yet, he keeps it hidden beneath an almost nonchalant exterior. The conversation is brief, but it leaves Sasuke questioning the identity of this mysterious individual. And as time goes on, 
their path continues to cross. Every day, outside of this hot spring, the man meets with Sasuke, giving him small tips and reminding him of combat tactics. Sasuke was quickly improving, and as the month was almost over, the man decided to teach Sasuke something. Sasuke, at first non-receptive, but inevitably accepts this man's help. We skip forward to the day of the tuning exams finals. As the tuning exams return the day of, matches go by. And as Naruto was called up to the table several times, we see him not appearing. As they were about to disqualify Naruto from the exam and let Sasuke fight off against Gara, disappointment streaking across Sasuke's face, wanting to have seen what Naruto had in store for him. Naruto and Kakashi appearing in a swirl of leaves. He's ready. Naruto stands across from Neji. The crowd roars as both of them stand opposed to each other. The tension thick. Naruto clenches his fist, remembering Kakashi's warning about the curse mark. Neji would say, you can't change your fate, Naruto. You're destined to lose. Naruto, gritting his teeth, says, I don't care about fate. I'll make my own destiny. As the fight begins, Naruto rushes forward, throwing a series of punches. Neji effortlessly dodging and countering with his gentle fist technique. Hitting several chakra points, Naruto staggers back, feeling the effects of his block chakra flow. Neji exclaims that it's over. You can't win against the Hugus power. Naruto thinks to himself, Damn, I can barely move. I can't use chakra right now. But I won't give in. Naruto remembers Kakashi's teachings on suppressing the curse mark and focusing on keeping it at bay. He starts using unpredictable movement and clones to keep Neji guessing. The two exchange blows, with Naruto relying on speed and trickery to avoid future chakra blockage. Neji exclaims that it's useless. Fate always wins. But Naruto, even though panting, says, Shut up about fate already. I've got more than just chakra, you know. Neji activates his Byakugan, preparing his 8 trigram 64 palms technique. He closes in on Naruto, delivering rapid strikes to further seal off Naruto's chakra. Naruto thinking as he falls, no, I can't give up. Just before falling completely, Naruto taps into the curse mark's power, just enough to regain his movement. He grits his teeth, Managing to stand. Still standing. It's pointless, Neji says. But Naruto forms several shadow clones, each rushing towards Neji from a different direction. Neji, relying on his Byakugan, destroys most of them, but suddenly the real Naruto disappears underground. Neji smirking. You think hiding underground will save you? I can see through everything. Neji preparing for his final strike, believing he's about to defeat Naruto. But Naruto's clone emerges from underground, grabbing Neji by his arms and legs. Naruto yelling from beneath the ground. Gotcha, idiot! The ground bursts open as the real Naruto streaks across the arena with lightning crackling in his hand. Naruto yelling, Lightning Blade! With increasing speed, charging towards Neji, with his clones holding him in place. Naruto unleashes a direct Chidori to Neji's chest, sending him flying across the arena. Neji collapsing, stunned by the raw power. The arena falls silent. Naruto panting, standing tall. You see, Neji, fate's got nothing on hard work. Believe it! The crowd erupts into cheers while Kakashi watches from above, a proud smirk on his face. Sasuke stands in awe not having thought Naruto capable of beating Neji in such a short time. Neji didn't even have time to unleash his ultimate attack, the palm rotation, which he was holding onto for Naruto's clones. But since he was interrupted so quickly and taken out so fast, he could never have actually stood up against him. As he lays there, Naruto approaches him, bad-mouthing him on what he said to Hinata saying that he might not have heard all of it, 
but he heard most, and that that was wrong. He should stop letting destiny take control of his life and decide for once on his own what he really wants, setting into course a chain of events that would change Neji forever. As the fight is called in Naruto's favor, Sasuke steps up to the board, prepared to face off against the most terrifying competitor in this year's shooting exams, Gara of the Sand. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button. Like I said at the start of the video, we are going to be posting some Yu-Gi-Oh! content soon. So stick around if you are interested for that. Also, I have been posting on another channel recently that you might be interested in. It's called The Fiction Forge. I'll leave a link to the most recent video of that over at the end of this video. We have been posting a custom JoJo series on there. It is incredible. It's called Shujo's Bizarre Adventures, and it follows the story or a custom story of Shizuka Joestar, the adoptive daughter of Joseph Joestar. So if you're interested, make sure to go check that out. And without further ado, this has been your boy Six. Peace. Until next time, nerds, we'll meet again In the virtual world where heroes ascend Keep the flame of adventure burning bright Until next time, nerds, let's take flight